train, for its type, is the most powerful vehicle on land. And the engines of Sodor are the power behind the docks, industries and branch lines that make up the world-renowned Northwestern Railway. These are the stories of Sodor. Godred's Day is practically sacred on Sodor. A commemoration to Godred McHarold, an ancient king of the island, it is preceded by a week of festivities. On the day itself, the celebrations are at their peak, as a grand parade is carried out by the island's engines, which ends with a wondrous fireworks display near Vickerstown. It might also be worth mentioning that Throughout this time, the island's native language of Sudrian is more widely spoken. Admittedly, those of us who are fluent in this Gallic tongue do enjoy teasing those who aren't. <laughs> I almost sounded like Diesel then. Bo Lily, Yich Chin, Guaya Senior, and Dave Gordre Godred. Poems, Winich Aich, Ye Mondori, Guaya Take Gro Guayat. You know, I'm all for remembering your roots and all that, but sometimes it just comes across as rude. Sorry, Peter. You're right. Indeed, we should only use Sudrian when it's appropriate. Hello, hello. Boar Diesel. Oh, ha, ha. Very funny. Ni kredaf, ein ford, yirian yaya honda kuriya twin sodrin, gulik wind do hian lily. Nai nia kro kalen, mai en kwen nia saro kuro bandia so kwe dia hai ni goro amak. Okay, while you two are doing that, Peter, Mr. Zoro wanted me to give you a message. You're taking a heavy goods train to the fort at 3 p.m. today. Um, all right, but who's going to handle my job at the lumber yard then? Me and Adam have got it covered. Kwen nia sreiwe. How? How did... Did I forget to mention Adam's been giving me and Diesel lessons in Sudrian lately? So, you mean... Yid? I know I should be annoyed, but I'm not. Good job to you and to Diesel for showing us up. This is why I've always liked you, Lily. You're gracious in defeat. Douglas is certainly a lucky engine. Thank you, Peter. And I'm very lucky to have him too. Oh, Peter. Thank goodness you're here. I need to talk to an engine with some sense. What do you mean, Edward? What's the matter? You know how this space was going to get its own engine? Yes. Well, he arrived today. And imagine my surprise to find he's ROD. Railway Operating Division? You mean those engines who served in the Great War? The very same. Oh, I see. I've never met one, but I've heard they can be pretty strict. That's putting it mildly. I've worked with a handful of ROD engines over the years, and they've all been the same. Rigid, obsessive, and downright annoying. And this one who's just turned up, his name's Benson, by the way, he's all that, and worse. Blimey! He's so by the book, I wouldn't be surprised if he wrote it. 
All right. I don't like the sound of any of that. But still, don't you think we should... Attention! Attention! Never mind. So, what do we have here? You! What are you doing parked on that line? I'm... Um, bringing in this goods train. Oh, I see. Is this the train that was meant to arrive at 1600 hours? That's four o'clock, right? Yes. Oi! There's to be no whispering amongst the ranks. I already told you we're civilians. We're not subject to military protocol. Silence! You did not have permission to speak, engine! Gah, Lord save me. Lock it up! Now, as for you! My name's Peter. Your name is irrelevant. The only thing that matters is that you, sir, are late! What do you mean, late? What part do you find confusing, engine? This train was supposed to arrive at 1600 hours. It is currently 1604! What do you have to say for yourself? Are you for real? I've probably been here a good few minutes. I'd say I was on time. Maybe you should learn to count, Benson. One more word out of you, Old Iron, and I will report you to your manager. As to this train, if it did indeed arrive on time, I apologize to you. But if it didn't, then you had better hope I never find out. Even if I was late, it was only by a couple of minutes. I'm not excusing it. I'm just saying, and I'm just saying to you, that we cannot afford even the slightest delays in these intense times. Britain's railways need to be strong and disciplined, as they were back in the Great War. Otherwise, when Jerry comes our way, we risk being overrun and destroyed. I don't fancy seeing Herr Hitler take up residence in Buckingham Palace. Do you? No. That's no, sir, to you, Engine. Do I make myself clear? No, sir. All right. I warned you. Your manager will hear about this. And my manager did indeed hear about my scuffle with Benson. I'm sorry to say that, as a war veteran himself, Mr. Starr took the matter seriously. He didn't take too kindly to hearing I had disrespected a fellow soldier, to use his words. As such, he removed me from regular service and assigned me to maintenance duties. The first act of which was overhauling the sheds at Knapford, as the old one had some building code violations. While the shed was being rebuilt, we had to sleep wherever we could. Some of us were lucky enough to sleep in the harbour's sheds. Some of us had to make do with a siding. And some of us had to bunk elsewhere, as in, not at Knapford. Thomas, for instance, had to sleep at the coal mine, which I'm sure he found very agreeable. Oh, I'm so excited! Godred's Day is tomorrow! It's certainly something to look forward to, no mistake. Annie and Clarabel got a new coat of paint yesterday. They said they wanted to look their best for the parade, and now they do. <sighs> What's wrong, Kate? Oh, it's just... I wish I could watch the parade. Isn't the mine closing early tomorrow? Not early enough. I've only been here a couple of years, but the lads always talk about how you lot look so grand as you rattle down the line. It would be wonderful to see even a small part of that. Ah well, that's life I suppose. I shouldn't complain about it. Not when I do get to see the fireworks. Excellent. I'll make sure to save you a spot. Right next to you, I hope. Don't worry. It will be. <laughs> All right, lover boy. Come on. We better get this lot to Napford. Okay, okay. Let's go. See you tomorrow, Kate. All right. Bye, lads. <sighs> What's up, Thomas? She was real upset about not being able to see the parade. I wish there was something we could do about that. Me too. But I don't see what. You think arranging another strike might be a bit too much? 
I think if you did that, it'd be best if you weren't on this island. And I don't just mean Sodor. Good call, Percy. Good call. All right, time to get to work. And Kate was certainly busy that day, as nearly every depot on the island needed a top-up. For hours on end, trucks loaded with coal left the mine and were delivered to every corner of Sodor. All was going well until it came time for the very last train to be taken out. Colin was meant to handle that job, but a faulty set of points had locked him in a siding at Brendam. As there was no one else who could take this load onto its destination of Barrow, Kate volunteered to deliver it. By the time she set out from Marston Heights, it was getting dark. And by the time she reached Carlden, a thick fog came down over the island. This frustrated her, as she had to curtail her speed. Nonetheless, she made good time. However, the thickness of the fog meant Kate didn't see the tree branch lying across the track until it was too late. Though annoyed, she was all right, as was her driver. Luckily, she had derailed next to the ballast transfer yard at Croven's Gate. From there, her driver was able to telephone for help. Unfortunately, the fog had grown denser by then. The conditions were deemed too unsafe to carry out a rescue. So Kate had to wait until dawn for help to arrive. Never you fear, my dear. We'll have you back on the rails in a jiffy. Thanks, Terence. <sighs> this is so embarrassing. It would be if you were the only engine to ever have an accident on this island. But you're not, so don't dwell on it. All right, Chief. I'm curious, Mickey. How does Sodor's safety record stack up to other parts of Britain? You don't want to know. Well, that answers that. <sighs> what is the hold-up? I should have left with the Express 20 minutes ago. You're not the only one who's suffering these delays, Gordon. Whatever the reason, how typical that it should happen on Godred's Day of all days. I had hoped to get my trains completed early so I might get a wash down before the parade. Seeing as how I'm leading it, it is imperative I look my best. Well, Gordon... There is that ditch near Vickerstown Shed. If you get real desperate, just go for a dip there. <laughs> <laughs> what cheek. All right, engines, listen up. I've got something to tell you. Is it about these delays, sir? Yes. There's been an accident near Croven's Gate. Kate's derailed near the ballast transfer yard. What? Don't panic, Thomas. She's fine. Mickey and Terence are at the scene right now. Unfortunately, the track took some damage in the accident and needs to be repaired on the double. Toby, is that flatbed of spare rail still over by Pier 3? Yes, sir. All right, go fetch it. Gordon, you will take it onto Croven's Gate. Me, sir? We need to get it there fast, and you are the fastest engine here. Thomas, you'll head on over to the lumber yard and pick up a truckload of wood to replace any broken sleepers. Right, sir. Oh, how terribly inconvenient. I'll never have time for a washdown now. Gordon, if the track doesn't get fixed, the parade might not happen at all. That is a good point. Then stop whinging and get ready to move out. Oh. <sighs> Why must I be the one who endures constant impudence? Oh, here comes trouble. Trouble with a capital T. What do you want, Thomas? Have you got any trucks loaded with wood? Of course we do. 
This is a lumber yard after all. Why? I need one. Car. No chance. Me and Adam have been working this site for days on our biggest contract yet. We ain't letting you nick one of our trucks. It's an emergency. Kate's derailed near Croven's Gate. Oh, well, if it's to help Kate, definitely no. Well, I'm taking one anyway. Oh, no, you're not. You do, and we'll report you to Joey. You fancy going back to Railgate? Why am I even bothering to ask you to? I'm taking a truck, and that's that. You got a problem with it? You can take it up with Mr. Star. And if you report me to Joey, you can explain to him that you held up a rescue operation. Car, I never thought you'd be one for daylight robbery, Thomas. I knew it. I knew it wasn't just Wendell who pinched all our trucks. <laughs> Are you all right, Kate? Yes, Thomas. I'm fine. I've hurt myself worse shunting trucks. That's my girl. Look on the bright side. You'll have to go to the works now, which is along the parade route. You might get to see it after all. Shh! People might think I did this on purpose. Well, we had best pray it was a genuine accident. Nobody on this island would take too kindly to hearing the parade had to be cancelled because of a deliberate act. Come on, Gordon. Let's not get ahead of ourselves and say the parade will be called off. All right. Let's get a professional's opinion then. Chief, what do you think? Can the repairs be completed on time? Or will we have to wait until next year? Yes, the rails may be fixed rather quickly as they aren't too badly damaged. However... Standard procedure concerning such repairs is to subject the track to as little traffic as possible for at least 24 hours afterwards. And I don't think allowing a cavalcade of standard gauge engines to run over this section would be a good idea. Are you saying you'll cancel the parade, Chief? Only if I have to, Thomas. In the interest of safety. But as you said, let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, we have to actually fix the track. The next few hours were very intense for the island. Word of Kate's accident had spread, as had the possibility that the parade might be cancelled. While Kate underwent repairs at Croven's Gate, Mickey and his crew worked with unparalleled efficiency to get the track fixed. It was hard going for the rest of us to not rush to the scene to offer our help. The only thing that kept us from doing so was the realization such an act might have made matters worse. The repairs were completed by noon and Mickey examined the rails. After careful consideration, the fire and rescue chief determined that the rails were too unsafe for the parade. <laughs> I'm just joking. Mickey did indeed allow the parade to go ahead on the provision that we traveled over the repaired section slowly and carefully. I'm quite certain I heard Sodor's collective sigh of relief at hearing the parade would go ahead. Gordon and Thomas promptly returned to Knapford and did indeed receive a washdown with the rest of us. We were all truly delighted that the parade would be happening. Even a snide remark from Adam and Diesel towards Thomas did nothing to spoil our mood. Once we were made presentable, all that was left to do was assemble at Knapford Station. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Kent Brockman of the BBC Radio. I am down by the trackside of Knapford Station, as is the entirety of the city. Though we stand under the shade of barrage balloons and within sight of imposing artillery, you would never know it, as the crowd's jubilation is enough to make you forget any and all woes you might have. Excitement is reaching fever pitch, as we are mere moments away from the famed 
Godred's Day Engine Parade. All right, gentlemen, follow my lead. Just make sure your dome stays attached, Gordon. Only if you promise to steer clear of any tar wagons, James. <whistles> right, here we go. And they're off. First up, we have the express engine of the LNER. Gordon, who is followed by Henry, the Nor'easter's heavy goods engine. Up next, come the highly versatile mixed traffic duo of James and Edward. Ah, I do see the notoriously cheeky shunters, Percy and Thomas, the latter of whom is hauling his faithful coaches, Annie and Clarabelle. And finally, we have the oldest engine of the company, a reliable tram named Toby, who carries with him his own coach. Trailing behind this aged pair is the strong, kind-hearted Eric. Oh, these engines are a spectacular sight indeed. Sodor is in for a true treat this year. And to think, we still have the LMS component of the parade to cover. For this, I will turn over the broadcast to Tom Tucker, who is waiting over by the MIDI's headquarters at Brendam. Tom? Thank you, Kent. Yes, I am here at Brendam Docks. The air is alive with the smell of the sea and the fervor of the crowd, as the engines of the LMS are about ready to set off. For a while, things were rather tense, as two of their number were a little late in returning from a job at the lumber yard. But all is well, and now they can travel along the line together. And here we go! First up, we have the Victorian trio of Colin, Lily and Adam. Highly dependable engines, despite their age, I have no doubt they'll be around for a good long time. And here comes a Patriot-class express engine named Reginald, followed by an 8F heavy goods locomotive called Peter. Up next, we have Donald, Douglas and Diesel, the first two of whom hail from my native Scotland. How do you like being here, lads? Ha-ha! <laughs> Me too! The crowd is certainly eating up the grandeur of this procession of middies. I've been covering this event for a number of years now, but I would go so far as to say this is the best yet. Now all that's left is for the rest of the island to enjoy the show. And Sodor did indeed enjoy Godred's Day in all its splendor. And I don't just mean on the standard gauge lines either. Both the Mid Sodor and Skarloey Railways had their own parade and celebrations. I'm pleased to say that our parade went off without a hitch. Over the repaired section of track, we proceeded in a slow and orderly manner. I'm also very pleased to say that Kate was not only repaired in record time, but she also got to see the entire parade. And come nightfall, she joined the rest of us at Vickerstown for the fireworks, which was preceded by a speech from His Grace, the Duke of Sodor. Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, and engines. Tonight, we are here to honor the memory of Godred MacHarold, a younger son of Harold, Danish King of Limerick. He took advantage of a defeat of the Norse by the Irish to go a Viking. He harried Wales, then sailing north, landed at a creek near Jerby on the Isle of Man on a starlit night. To the wandering natives who were familiar with fair-haired Norse, but not with dark-haired Danes, he pointed to the stars reflected in the water and said, There is the path running from my country to this place. That is my road to fame and fortune. This is the quote that earned him the moniker 
of Starstrider. Godred beat off all invaders and gave Sodor and the Isle of Man ten years of peace and security, a longer consecutive period than any remembered before. It is therefore hardly surprising that in the turmoil of subsequent years, his reign should be remembered as a golden age. His legacy is what we are celebrating. Without him, Sodor might not be what it is today. To commemorate his strong reign, the sky shall be lit up as brightly as the night Godred set sail for this island. Let the fireworks begin! Considering how my day started, this was a perfect end. I'm just glad you could be here to enjoy it. So am I. It's made all the more special I can be here with you. That night was filled with joy, jocularity and conversation, as old friends caught up and new ones were made. In that moment, we weren't middies or nor'easters just engines enjoying the celebrations. And the timing couldn't have been more perfect. Something I haven't mentioned before now is the specific date Godred's Day fell on. August 31st. And given this was the year 1939, if any of you know your history, then you'll know what happened the very next day.